so I don't need an introduction again because that's what I wanted to say to introduce myself. Uh, <laughs> Um, I am totally displaced here, but I hope you will still find something good in my talk. Uh, I will talk about uh, a project called Miracles, and it's about increasing the sensitivity of what you've heard in the first talk. So the first talk of Ruben was a great introduction to this talk, so I have not to come back to other things, and all of you who missed it, too bad for you. Uh, so it's, it's about collinear laser spectroscopy. And we want to enhance it by doing multiple refraction of ion beams. And that's where I come in, because I'm an ion trapping mass spectrometry man. So I have nothing to do with, uh, with hyperfine interaction, as was pointed out. Uh, but we think this is a good method to uh, enhance the sensitivity. Um, so what is a multi-reflection time of flight mass spectrometer? It's also called an ele static, electrostatic beam trap, ion beam trap. Um, we did not introduce that, but we implemented such a machine, such a component built at Greifswald at uh, what is called ISOL trap. ISOL trap is a precision mass measurement uh, experiment at, uh, at ISOL, the CERN, which you heard about before also. Uh, and initially we put it there in order to have a high resolution mass separator. So the ions coming from ISOL are Actually, it's a time of flight instrument, but that, I, that I should maybe explain it. In time of flight mass measurements, you give all the ions that you start with an energy, and then the heavy one are not as fast at the same kinetic energy as the light ones. So if you let them run for a while and bring them to a detector and measure at what time comes what, you can tell what is the, the mass of what. And the longer the way they go, the more they are separated and the more precise you can do the measurement. And instead of building an instrument kilometer long, what we do is we inject the ions into a meter size instrument and let them go back and forth a thousand times. Okay, and that's where you get very high resolution. Resolving power 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and the corresponding uh, precision in, in the mass value. Okay, we can do mass measurements. We initially, as I said, did that for separating masses. So if they come at different times through a gate, we can use that gate to let only the ones through that we want. And then you can do even more precise measurements in panning traps. So I don't have the time to talk about all these traps. We have a high uh, uh, a radio frequency trap for collecting and bunching. This is a continuous beam coming from Isolde. All the rest is a pulsed experiment. Then we go through this instrument that I just explained. And then there are panning traps where you can do cyclotron measurements, uh, cyclotron resonance measurements, um, and then you can be even more precise. So that's what we do when we want to get more precise. And then we do this just as a separator, the multi-reflection. Um, and uh, the first time we actually used that at Isolde, at ISOL trap, this is the experiment at Isolde, was in uh, 2013. And in the same year already, we also used it, made use of it as a mass spectrometer. Uh, and both of these measurements were very important in terms of uh, the uh, nuclear synthesis uh, uh, simulations and in terms of here in particular in terms of nuclear structure experiments. Okay, a more uh, simple experiment we have at Greifswald at home uh, where we use uh, a, a just a laser and ablation to create um, a bunch of clusters, atomic clusters. I also want to introduce this, but it's the same experiment. If you let the the ions run through just once. You get all the different cluster sizes. In, in that case, it's, it's lead clusters uh, of uh, 20, 50, or whatever number of atoms. Um, and you, you can further study these. Uh, and now I come to it. If you let them run, if you're not 
shoot through, but let them uh, go back and forth 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 40 times, times. Actually, this is just one of the classes. This is just the number five, but uh, because LED has several isotopes, you get these isotopologues, as they are called, if you have a, uh, a system of many of them. And you, if you go further, this 40 is here. If you run up, these are all spectra like this. You can separate these very well. And uh, here you, you just see how they are distributed in time. But you can actually throw out all the other clusters, which are in here, come because they go a different number of cycles. Uh, they, they then come simultaneously, but you can get rid of all of them. And you can also separate just one of these isotopologues. And not only with a resolving power of, uh, well, what do you see here, uh, 10,000, you can also go up and up and uh, go to higher orders of magnitude. And we use this instrument at Greifswald to further develop these uh, uh, procedures, these techniques that we use at ISOLDE. And uh, we also now actually started doing a real cluster experiments as well. So this is the only transparency, uh, which is, uh, well, the summary of what we heard uh, this morning, or the introduction of what we heard, the, the summary of the introduction. So yeah, wh why do you use uh, hyperfine uh, transition experiments uh, in nuclear physics? And I won't get into that. Now, why? Do we want to make it better? Uh, as you heard this morning, if you do an acceleration of the ions and work at higher energies, you can improve your resolving power. The resolution, the, the width goes down as the uh, um, distribution of the energy divided by the absolute, the square root of the absolute uh, energy. Uh, so uh, this is why you do collinear laser spectroscopy in the first place. Um, if you do a bunching, you increase the signal to noise. If you do this with a continuous beam, let's see, did I have, did I have that? No, I have, don't have it. I should go further. No, I don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have a continuous beam, you have noise all the time. If, if you can bunch your uh, uh, ions of interest, uh, you reduce uh, the signal taking to a small time, so you also reduce um, the, uh, uh, the background. Uh, nevertheless, uh, that means you do an accumulation for several milliseconds, say, and then you only do the experiments on the ions for something on the order of a few microseconds or even less, just a few nanoseconds, hundreds of seconds. This should not be a hundred seconds, but hundreds of seconds, uh, 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 times of uh, nanoseconds to a few uh, microseconds. So the idea, how can you do this more efficiently? As you heard what I've been doing uh, before that, you know already, you go back and forth and do the measurement all the time that you have while you are collecting uh, the new uh, sample. Uh, so you get longer observations time, or let's say repeated many times, this observation with the same ions instead of going through just once and then dumping them. And uh, okay, we need a high uh, a beam energy in order to get the high resolution. This will be for the future. Um, but if we do this back and uh, forth again and again and again, we get another improvement factor on top of that bunching uh, as uh, the square root of the number of revolutions that we can make. And this is a simulation of what we expect with one resolution for a particular uh, uh, case. After 100 resolution, you can already mention there is a, a signal and then after 1000 uh, revolutions, it's really there. So depending on what the mass of the ions is and what the lifetime is, we get uh, certain improvement factors. Of course, if the mass is large, then it takes a long time to go around. And then uh, uh, depending on what the lifetime is, which you have to uh, convolute with that, 
uh, you get more or less improvement factor, but you can see it's, uh, it goes up into actually the several hundreds depending on what case we're talking about. Um, this is a proof of principle experiment uh, which we uh, set up at uh, uh, Geneva. Um, the time of light, uh, the, the uh, multi reflection time of light instrument uh, was built for different purposes at Greifswald and was remodeled and uh, here we have a magnesium, stable magnesium, this is all not uh, online, this is offline, uh, ion source, uh, we do a bunching and uh, radio frequency trap and then go uh, through a bender, then the collinear laser comes in through here for the actual measurements. Oh, I should have said one more thing. This morning we already heard about GRIS, where you do an ion detection, which of course is very efficient, but which has some disadvantages, where, which were not mentioned <laughs> on purpose and, and uh, pointed out that it was not mentioned. Of course, for example, you heard that you need uh, a stepwise uh, excitation, so many uh, steps. Here we have just in the easy cases at least one laser and here we do the, actually a photon counting. So um, this is why we want also the enhancement uh, because of course uh, because of the small uh, uh, spatial angle you don't catch all the photons of course. Um, so this set, uh, system was set up. Uh, actually the lasers are not seen here. The lasers are in a different lab and then come via fibers and this is just a little bit of matching to the instrument. Um, there is the, the ion source, then there's a bender, and this is the region uh, where the ions go back and forth, and the uh, photomultiplier. This is how it looks like with a net inside. Uh, there are other stories about why these instruments work uh, particularly well. I don't have the uh, time to go into to that. And uh, this is one of the first signals. Uh, the first signals actually we got last fall. Um, for going around for seven times back and forth. So this is the initial uh, going through and then, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, only, okay. I, this should be, is that, ah, okay. Uh, it, you only get the signal if they go in the right direction because otherwise they're not at resonance. So this is a signal that you get when you're already on resonance. Um, so as a function of time, how many photons? Uh, will you get in, in the photon counter and you you can go on this is where the ions were uh, uh, ejected but you can also uh, not release them here and go on for uh, several hundreds of uh, revolutions up to a thousand or even more and this is if you're okay what we saw here is when you're in resonance when the, the laser uh, frequency is on resonance and if you now scan the laser and do the experiment again and again and again at different laser frequencies, then you get a resonance, uh, of course. Uh, there are some things we still are working on. Uh, for example, you have to tweak the potentials of the, the trap in order to have the ions go through nicely. Uh, this, for example, is if you haven't yet tweaked it, then you can see that the resonance frequency is moving. So if you add up all the, the signal that you have as a function of uh, the laser frequency, you get something like this. After tweaking, this is uh, what you can achieve. Uh, in in uh, principle, it should be something like 0.7 gigahertz, uh, and we are almost there. And this again is the principle uh, down here. Why is this? If, uh, if not everything is correct, then the angle that the ions go through here uh, is changing as a function of time and the ions have to settle. It takes a while until they do that uh, this, uh, uh, and this region is reached. Uh, but uh, y this can be, as I said, uh, uh, investigated and improved and has been improved. This is another uh, example of uh, s uh, measurement series ha which has been done before the tweaking and after the tweaking. Okay, so this is actually the first isotopic shift that has been uh, measured. Of course, uh, magnesium has uh, several um, uh, stable isotopes, among them the, the two even ones which have no hyperfine interaction, of course. <laughs> 
uh, they have spin zero. Uh, so uh, uh, it's, uh, it's even even uh, nuclei. Um, but uh, at least you can see that uh, the, the resonances are not at the same position. So what, what we actually measure here is the isotopic shift. And the 25 has a more complicated type of fine structure uh, uh, signal, of course, but uh, we are not yet there. Um, in the future, uh, this, this proof of principle experiment was at, on the order of uh, one to two uh, kilo electron volt uh, operation. In the future, we're about to design uh, a 20 kV uh, system. And in addition, this uh, will come with a linear pole trap, which will be cryogenic, so that the initial uh, energy distribution of the ions will be reduced to what, whatever is possible, as small as possible. Uh, with that, I'm at my conclusion, we have, we, are, or we have built a proof of principle experiment already and we are in the progress of uh, building a bigger system called Miracles, uh, which uh, offers high ses sensitivity for collinear laser spectroscopy. And we do that by repeated operation, uh, repeated observation of the, the photon signal in an Amatov device. Uh, yeah. This is saying the same thing and specifying that it's more precise. It's depending on the case, 20 like uh, to 600 times higher res uh, sensitivity, um, and this will open uh, the uh, the prospect of, of look looking at more exotic nuclei, which are important for nuclear structure research, uh, nuclear synthesis, as I already mentioned, and other things. <laughs> and uh, yeah. It also, in addition, will offer new opportunities uh, to uh, go to higher uh, ion fluxes and, and use the system, maybe not the same apparatus, but in the same scheme as uh, an enhanced uh, uh, mass apparatus at Isolde or other places. There are, these things are popping up now everywhere. Thanks for your attention. I shouldn't forget that there are many people working on that and, and helping us with that. Okay. Okay, thank you for the talk.